How I built a dual 40 inch Mac editing setup for under a thousand pounds with M1 Apple Silicon. The setup that runs my whole YouTube channel behind me cost about half what the 27 inch iMac that it replaced did, about a thousand pounds. Now that's the price of a brand new MacBook Air and it's also faster. So would you like to know how? Let's get into it. So full disclosure, I also use my iPhone in the pursuit of making videos, but I feel like pretty much anyone looking at a Mac setup has probably already got an iPhone or at least a smartphone of some sort. So I've not included an iPhone in the price, but that said, why would I? Well, we'll get to that a little bit later. Also, like most people, I didn't buy the setup all in one go. It's a combination of things that I already had around and some new stuff that I bought specially too, but we've kind of costed everything in. So let's get on with it. So let's start off with the heart of the desk setup, the Mac Mini M1. I went for the base model simply because I was expecting that I'd want to replace it with an M1X iMac as soon as they arrive, though I'm not actually so sure anymore. I may have been spoiled by the sheer screen real estate that this setup offers. The M1 Mac Mini is an absolute beast of a machine for my needs and was bought to replace my 2013 27-inch iMac that is now on the side of the desk with boot camp installed, though honestly I don't use it very often, just a handful of older games and if I particularly need something Windows based for work. So the price paid for this Mac Mini, £624. Retail is £699 but my wife bought it for me as a student, thank you for doing a master's degree Joe. so there was a very helpful saving in there. Now you may or may not be a student, but there is certainly money to be saved on the Mac Mini. For example, at the time of writing, you can grab the same model from Amazon brand new for £648.45 or used on Amazon for £603.06, which is an insane value. Everything that we mention in this video as well, there will be an affiliate link if I can find one, and if there isn't, then I'll just give you a link to whatever I can find. So I think enough has been said about the awesome performance of the M1, and I have to say that I was slightly affected by buyer's remorse when I got it, as some of the biggest advantages of the M1 are battery life and efficiency, and the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air also come with great keyboards, displays, trackpads within their price but that has vanished very quickly as an issue for me. The M1 Mac Mini also gives you the most flexibility in your setup and has some of the best performance you can get from the M1 chip. It has more I.O. than the others and it has a real cooling system so it never throttles. And I've never even heard the fan, even when doing 45 minute renders in Blender with everything running at 100%, you could just about feel a warm slight breeze at the back you could hear nothing. The vintage Power Mac G4 that it sits on though is not included in the build price, I'm afraid. So moving on to displays, which after the Mac Mini itself have to be the main attraction I guess, the main display I have at the bottom is a JVC 4K Android TV running at native resolution over HDMI to USB-C cable. Because it's so big, 40 inches, there's no need to use the Mac's built-in scaling to smooth the display, so instead I use it to fit more content on the display. In the past I've run 2 to 3 displays when using the iMac, typically with the iMac itself being the primary display, and then a couple of 1080p panels either side, but knowing that that wasn't a practical option with the Mac Mini, I knew I wanted a 4K TV, and picked up this one about a month after the Mac. The screen colour is absolutely fine for me, though there are occasions on some websites where they don't like uh, certain greys that don't play nicely with the screen and you get dancing pixels. 9to5 Mac is actually a big culprit here. Anyway, the screen ran me £249, bringing our running total to 873 The top display was a nice win for me and I actually bought it a while ago, used from eBay for about £40. It's only 1080p here, but because it's so high up and generally I use it for viewing media like YouTube while I'm working on the main display, it's absolutely perfect and brings me up to 5 1080p displays equivalent. I also keep Twitter up there quite often or find a Windows when I'm editing so I can just grab what I need for Final Cut Pro. It's a Bush TV and while the bottom bezel is a little bit chunky, it sits behind the main display and out of sight anyway. This one's connected directly via regular HDMI straight into the Mac's HDMI port. While I wanted to use my HomePod Mini as the audio output for the Mac, and it does work, anything with quick changes has delays when you're starting a stopping video for example because of using Bluetooth and when you're editing video that is a bad thing. But quite a while ago I bought myself Harman Kardon sound sticks, over 7 years at least. And in fact I managed to get hold of two sets on eBay, one first generation and one second generation in a single lot as spares or repairs for about £40. They now both work perfectly. 
I did have to reseat some of the drivers using a bit of hot glue, but absolutely no problems sound wise. They're both working fully and sound incredible. And the main reason that I wanted these in the first place is that Apple design chief at the time, Johnny Ive, had worked with Harman Kardon on the design. And while I still think they look incredibly modern, they also match perfectly with Apple's design direction at the time that they came out of the PowerPC G4s, like the G4 Cube and the Sunflower iMac. Now this particular sub is missing its rubber feet, so a little blue tack helps to keep it in place as well as eliminating any rattling on the desk. And these speakers are still relatively easy to find used or you could use the speakers in your TV if they're any good. Mine were not any good at all. So we're up to £933. I reused the keyboard and trackpad from my iMac for this setup because I've got some other stuff knocking around for that, as well as using an old RAT1 wired mouse which is honestly crap, but for the odd jobs on Photoshop where the trackpad isn't ideal, it helps out and it generally lives out of the way under the TV to keep my setup as clutter free as possible. Now, I assume that most people do have a keyboard and mouse that they can borrow, salvage from a family member or an older computer, so I've not really thought too much about these in the price, and also because I forgot. However, you can pick up a wired keyboard and mouse combination on Amazon for around £16, so we'll include that in our price just in case. In terms of function though, there is something else that's missing versus the MacBook Air, which is microphones and FaceTime camera. Now I was able to grab a couple of microphone arms for £9 each on Amazon because they happened to be on sale at the time, and made use of my old blue snowball mic which I've owned for about a decade, but it's still great. I think it was about £40 when I bought it and you can find them now used for less than £30 on eBay. On the other arm I have an iPhone mount, just taken from the top of a £1 mini tripod from the pound shop which is our version of the dollar store and that works just perfectly and will happily hold my iphone 12 pro max while streaming without issue it's also great for facetime calls and that kind of thing so that brings our price neatly to 998 pounds less than the price of an m1 macbook air and i think you'll agree probably quite a lot more system for your money although i do have to admit it is less portable and that's where the price stuff stops, but also there is a lot more stuff in the studio, including the cable management, which is a conduit that runs about an inch or so above the desk attached to the wall, and I've also run LED strips through that too. The sound panels on the wall were pretty cheap from eBay, and they're just pure foam that just helps take a little bit of the echo out of this room. And I also happen to share this space with our home's boiler, electricity and gas meters, electrical breaker board, and a tumble dryer for the laundry. The old iMac still here using a keyboard I was sent for review a little while ago. It's a KLIM mechanical one with RGB and everything, as well as a drop leaf table that I kind of pop up when I'm filming these daily shows here. The desk itself is an IKEA worktop and then that is suspended on two old kitchen cabinets that were in this house when we bought the house. We've kind of recycled an awful lot of stuff, but these things are the perfect height for a desk and they give me a whole bunch of storage. So underneath I have a Samsung 430W laser printer. I have a whole massive box full of cables because who doesn't need a load of cables? And then on the other side I have tripods, spare keyboards, uh, all the kind of video equipment -y bits all lives under that side out of the way. But I thought I should probably not include those in the, uh, in the cost of the setup because these units came with the house and the house, you know, we're getting into several tens of thousands of pounds at that point to buy a house just to get this desk so i didn't want to include that so i hope you enjoyed this little setup tour and don't forget you can join us every weekday at 12 utc for the latest apple leaks news and rumors and if you have a question about this or anything else apple please feel free to drop them down in the comments using the hashtag iCaveAnswers. thanks so much for watching see you in the next one